I became a sculptor uh, quite unexpectedly uh, six months after I graduated from college. I was always pretty good at art, drawing and painting. I loved it uh, ever since I was a little kid, uh, but never really thought of art as being an occupation. I thought of it strictly as a hobby. That all changed pretty dramatically uh, at the age of 22 years old after four winters uh, in upstate New York where I went to Hobart College. The only thing I was thinking about once I got my diploma was I'm going to the Caribbean for a while. So I ended up on the island of St. Croix and the first place I looked for work, they're very relaxed in the Caribbean. Any of you that have been there may know this. Uh, so the guy looked at me and he said, well, uh, we're looking for a lifeguard. Do you want the job? He didn't ask if I could swim, but I could swim. So I got the job as a lifeguard and uh, was immediately inspired to paint because it was an absolutely gorgeous place. Horseshoe shaped beach with coconut palms and turquoise water. So I got on my motorbike, I rode around the island of St. Croix looking for an art supply store. There was none. So I, a little frustrated, I couldn't paint. Um, I met a guy, fortunately, on the island who made furniture. He was one of the very first people on the planet, I think, to make what's called live edge furniture. So instead of squared off, it was the edge of the tree. He had access to some absolutely beautiful wood, mostly mahogany. So one day I woke up and I thought, well, if I can't paint, maybe I could try wood carving. So I went to him, uh, borrowed a mallet, two carving tools. I bought a piece of mahogany and the next day on the beach, uh, while I was lifeguarding, I, and with really little expectation, I struck the chisel with the mallet and instantly something happened in here. It, and I said to myself, this feels terrific. Before that one day was over, I said to myself, apparently I am supposed to be a sculptor. It was quite unexpected, very dramatic. And so from that point on, I had a direction for my life to go. And I knew immediately this wasn't just a hobby, this was what I was put here to do. So I went from wood to stone to marble, uh, be, was a carving a carver for probably 10 or 12 years. Uh, I never took a class, never went to art school, I just seemed to know how to do it. And then um, in the early 1980s is when I got connected with clay and bronze and that completely won me over. But the footnote to the story which made sense of the whole experience for me was uh, shortly before my 92-year-old Irish grandmother died. Um, I had a converse, wonderful conversation with her and I found out for the first time her grandfather was a marble sculptor and I had not known that. And as soon as she told me that, I instantly remember back to the day I first struck a chisel with a mallet and suddenly all of this made sense. It's just like all the pieces just came together and I understood how this really works. Having been carving for probably 12, 13 years or so, uh, I then got an opportunity to work in clay and cast something in bronze, and that completely won me over. I realized immediately that this was the best medium to work in for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is because I can do these in additions, meaning multiples, that in theory at least there was an opportunity to make a living at this and devote all my time to it. And then the other more important reason, or equally important, was this medium allowed me to create sculptures that I never would have even contemplated if I was still working in wood, stone, or marble. This sculpture, for example, this wouldn't have entered my consciousness. This clearly would not have been possible. So bronze, from the creative standpoint, is a very liberating medium. It allows me to literally create virtually anything I could imagine. And with the help of a good foundry and the green foundry in Elliott, Maine is where these are cast, just the other side of Portsmouth. They are very capable. Uh, they apparently enjoy my work because it's very challenging and I appreciated hearing that feedback. So anyway, in my mid thirties, uh, 1983 is when I got reconnected to this theme depictions of Northeastern Indians, the Iroquois, and the Algonquians. This is a subject that I loved as a kid. It was almost like I was born with an interest in this and had forgotten about it for 20 years. It was also a subject in sculpture that nobody had ever done before. Certainly the American West has been done by countless numbers of people, beginning with Remington and Russell, but Northeastern Indians have been overlooked, have been forgotten about. So. Uh, 
I had no idea if there'd be any interest, but I was excited about it and I ran with it and uh, took a chance. And fortunately, right from the beginning, it was well received, so I've been able to keep doing it all these years. So the first mold that's made from the clay is a rubber mold. The rubber mold is reusable. That allows me to make the addition that I decide to make, the number of copies. So on all the labels, if you look near the top under the title, it'll say bronze edition and the number, that's how many castings um, I decided to make. He said, at some distance behind these stood a chief remarkably tall and well made. He was actually this height in real life. But so, of so stern an aspect, he said, that the most undaunted person could not behold him without feeling some degree of terror. <laughs> so he was clearly an intimidating fellow. Uh, most of my time's involved in the research. So the stories like this one that go with each sculpture reflect a little part of the research. And I think that is the key to why I'm still really excited about the subject. It is literally like discovering a whole forgotten world. And the resource material that I'm tapping into, that I'm relying on, on this subject, Northeastern Indians, is virtually inexhaustible. As little known as it is, uh, it is vast. Tens of thousands of books, French, English, and Dutch sources, uh, oral histories of the native people themselves. Um, all of this is the foundation for all of the sculptures, and it is literally like discovering a whole forgotten world. And continues to be a just a wonderful world to explore. So that's how I became a sculptor. That's how I got involved in this subject matter, which is my life's work. And uh, I'm more excited about it now than ever. So I still feel very fortunate and be able to say that. Uh, and sculpting is not something you retire from. I'll do it until the end and uh, hopefully have uh, a lot more pieces in me to uh, create.